You kidding me? This is the only one of these trucks in town. Nobody's got these trucks anymore. I will be the hero. They'll know me when I'm coming to town. They'll know me by my brown tin grill Dodge. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't stand the excitement. We're gonna put the fender back on the Dodge. We're gonna start on the driver's side. Gotta do some stuff to the passenger side first before we can get that side done, but we can are ready to install the driver's side fender here. Let me get some hardware right quick. We got original inner fender, some Eastwood rust encapsulator here where I sandblasted it and uh, coated it up. We're gonna put some fluid film on the edges here so there's fluid film between the metal. We got the fender which is in decent shape-ish. Got the core support in good shape. Let me get a bunch of hardware out and uh, let's put hang the fender on here. Actually, what we got here? We got existing hardware. Oh, look at that. We got existing shims. I don't know how many of these shims are gonna need, but we will see how it shakes out. I'm super excited. I got the driver's side fender here. I want to spray some fluid film up inside here. I took more rust encapsulator and I painted the inside of the fender on the back side of this panel, which was just like bare metal and with surface rust, I painted that. Let's get the fluid film out. We're just going to hit it right quick. Just get a little on there. Just going to throw a little up in here where it's going to be hard to reach later. Got a little bit of black mixed into my clear, that's all right. Get a little color. Color to the inside of the fender. I think we're ready to place the fender on the truck. Here we go. Why does that get over there? Oh, there goes the paint. Dang it. Hold on a minute. Should have taped up the cowl, the windshield post. Dang it. Minor little scratch. You know, nobody can see it. You guys can't see it from where you're at. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. All right, got that rear stud hung on. What's this doing? Hope. Oh, this is. Apparently, the core support. Let's see, go. Did I tighten it up too much? Hmm. We seem to have some kind of misalignment issue here. All right, now I can get the core support back a little bit. There we go. Man, this fits tight. Aha! So if I can get the fenders close to where they were originally, they'll probably t line me up good. That's about where it was. The paint mark is lined up perfect. Top of the fender is gonna go out just a hair. All right, looks pretty good. 
gonna slide a couple of shims in. This had three, it looks like it needs like two maybe. Ow! Ooh, that's a finger pincher. All right, we're in the ballpark. The top of the fender is pushed away in. I gotta do some adjustive tape to it, but that, uh, starting to line up. I'd say we got a fender most of the way on here. Man, look at the look at the height with the lift. I'm gonna put a little bit bigger tire on it, but she's gonna have that factory high boy look. It's gonna be way up in the air. I got a huge gap here on the fender, but the it's pushed out on the bottom quite a ways. I'll probably land the bottom. There's a screw that goes in the middle here in the door jam. I'll probably line that up with the door best I could, then I'll have to pull the top of the fender out. This this gap is huge there, but this door is severely wrinkled. Okay, check it out. I got the fender bolted on. I've got all the bolts in it. Um, the only thing it's tight is here on where it mounts to the core support because that's kind of like locked in. I lined that up originally. And I got the inner fender bolts all in and they're s s loose, but they're there. One thing I did notice here, even though my door is wrinkled really bad, I've got a misalignment that's pretty bad here. I've got this huge gap at the top of the door and then it gets tighter, 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 and then the fender is touching the rocker panel down here. So what that tells me is I think my core support needs to come up. Now, in the last video, I put the core support on, and we used the outside 75 mounts. I drilled this core support, which used to mount inboard on the 80 and up frame. I used the outside mounts here, and I got a feeling they're not tall enough. Um, you can see them there, they're urethane. I got a feeling they're not tall enough and the front of the truck is a little bit low. So what I'm gonna do is loosen up the bolt, take the nut off, I'm gonna use a floor jack, and uh, just, they're actually gonna loosen the nut up some, I'm gonna use a floor jack and slowly jack this up and see if it changes that, the misalignment in the fender there. It probably's gotta come up maybe a quarter of an inch or so, maybe out here, and it should straighten that gap out on the door. Now the door, the door does open and close fine. It doesn't bind on the fender. Um, obviously you can see the gap is the gap is very large this fender is bent flared out a little bit it's bent out here where it creased it and this door i like beat it back into submission so it's got to be behind so it's going to end up with a huge gap here just because how the door is smashed but this lower gap and this upper gap are telling me that something is off and it also here you can see it's quite a ways away from the cab it looks like the paint was thin here so that tells me that fender on the original cab was up pretty tight to that joint so we're that's another indication that we're a little off so everything that attaches to the cab is loose right now so if i take that uh, core support and we jack it up just a little bit it should straighten this gap out okay you guys watch the the gap i got the floor jack under the core support i'm just gonna put a little bit into it right there it looks like it picked way up Oh yeah, that opened up the, the gap on the bottom. Oh yeah. Okay, the whole gap is about the same. That's gotta go back to about there. Actually, that's about where my bolt showed. So if I run this, let's run it right there. That is just a touch high on that. How many shims I got? And I got three shims. Shoot, probably only needs two shims. But how's this? Okay, down here. Okay, now the fender is pulled away. That really uh, straightened it out quite a bit. The fender is in just a hair. How's it look? Yeah, that'll suck down where it needs to be, I think, that way. Just give it a little tug backwards. Oh, right about there. I 
I think that's close enough for government work. Close enough for government work. Look at that. I know you guys can't see down here, but the, uh, the lower gap is about the same. What kind of gap do I got up here in a core support? Ooh, quite a bit. Like I said, about a quarter inch. Hmm. But that's what I needed. Those biscuits must be just a, a little bit shy. Actually, I had to go down just a hair with this thing. Maybe about there. Yeah, that's right on the that's right on the money right there. So I've just got to put about that much of a shim, a couple of washers in under the core support. This is nice. This gap looks like it's pretty good there. This is lines up nice here. It's just a touch high, but the fender looks like it's got a different shape than the door it does. But right here, this line, you know, if I it really needs one more shim out of it, but guess what? This thing is so mangled. I'm not gonna worry about it. How's this body line? Oh, it is. Let's see, quite a bit taller there. How am I, oh, if I get, I'm gonna get a huge gap here if I take too many shim, shims out. Well, I can't believe how awesome this is, but I got to, I'm looking right at it. Fender is mounted. Why is the heater always running when I'm trying to talk? But it, it is not bad gap wise. Here, it's about there and about here, it's about the same, even though like, like I said, a thousand times the door is wrinkled. I've got this the best I could here. I ended up taking all the shims out of the back bolt and I got one shim in the front. It's as close as it's gonna get. Um, up here in the front in the core support, I had the shim at four washers here and I put one more in that I needed uh, height wise because I think this uh, urethane might squish just a little bit. So I added just one extra one. Uh, you can see that side still down over there. I'm gonna pick that up and make it match so the front end's level. But all the bolt holes line up on the fender here everywhere. I've tightened all the bolts down, the battery hold down. Uh, I put all new bolts in here. This thing's all locked in. Everything's locked in good. You can actually see it through the door hole. There is a bolt. Where is it? In here somewhere halfway down. Oh, if I open the door, you'll really be able to see it. Right, right there you see the head of that bolt maybe. It's right, right here. So that locks the inner part of the door in. Um, this fender is bowed out just a hair. I might take the dead blow hammer and just kind of roll this edge back in to close this gap up just a little bit. But as you can see, my smash door clears, clears fine. And uh, yeah, so a couple videos ago I took and I rubbed out this door just a little bit of wax real fast to get all the debris off it. And you can see the shine here, the rich uh, dark sunfire metallic which is really close to the dark sunfire I put on the cab and I painted that. So this fender is all grungy, but you see, you can see down here, it should, it should rub out the same way. So I'm gonna order off probably like Amazon or something, a polishing kit with some cutting uh, compound and a buffer wheel and polishing compound. And when we assembly the truck and get it all together, I'm gonna rub the whole thing out with a, a buffing wheel and we'll try to shine it up best we can. If it shines something like this from like 38 feet away, it'll look presentable. And um, I think it'll look halfway decent. But look at what the stance we got here with the four inch lift. It's got like a really neat high boy look. These are uh, two 3585s I have on here. I'm gonna be running two 55-85-16s, which are a 33 inch tire. This tire is about a 31 and a half right now. So it'll, it'll get a little bit more of a tire in the wheel well, but it's, uh, it's definitely gonna have like a high boy look with the four inch lift. And I'm not sure what you could run on the four inch lift. Maybe like, I'm sure you could run 33, like 10 and a half or 12 and a half. They might just barely touch there. Height wise, you could probably maybe fit like a 34 on them, which is like an oddball size. But this will have 33s on it. I wanted the high skinny look of like a high boy truck. It'll look, it'll look pretty sweet. Now we gotta go to the other side. Wait a minute, we can't. I'm filming this a couple days in advance because I need to do some metal work. I've got to replace the front of this inner fender here, and I've got to replace a piece here. 
And then I've got a controversial maneuver I'm gonna do on this fender. Let's come over here and check this out. This fender has severe rot in the bottom of it down here and the brace on the inside's gone a lot. I, ha I was gonna just put down the hole in it, but I have an aftermarket, complete aftermarket fender assembly out in a shed. I've actually got three of them for the passenger side. And I've tried to sell like one or two of my extra fenders at swap meets for a year and a half at like a hundred bucks and nobody wants them. So what I think I'm gonna do, and this is gonna be controversial, is I'm gonna go and saw like eight inches off the bottom of the fender I'm gonna take the brand new aftermarket fender, cut the bottom of it off, and graft it onto here. Now why wouldn't I just put the entire aftermarket fender on, like have a brand new fender? It's because I want the paint and I want the patina to match on the truck. So this is gonna end up being painted black down here anyways for the body line on the whole bottom of the truck, so I can splice it here in the flat black area, and you know, nobody will never know and put a new bottom section with a new brace and stuff them out to the cab just on the bottom of this fender. The rest of the fender is in really, really nice shape. Like, it's very straight. I think it's got one or two little dings, hardly any scratches. It'll buff out really nice, and then we'll just repair this little bottom section with the aftermarket fender section. All right, it's so a couple days later. I got you hanging in the ceiling so you can see what we're doing here. But I'm patching the inner fender panel. I already went and I made a patch in the center of the fender which was just a piece of flat metal. Pretty much, I'm using like 18 gauge, which is pretty close to what these fenders are. They're not going to be perfect. There is some rust pinholes in here and there. This this panel's not perfect, but I just butt welded it in there best I could. It had a bunch of spots that blew through and had to touch it up, but that's not, that's, it's fine. The big problem is up here in the front, so I've made a new panel out of 18 gauge. What I did is I just cut it out and I used my homemade brake and I just bent it and moved it and bent it and moved it and made nice, a nice roll here that kind of matches what the original one was. And I just hammered the edge over my uh, flat piece of steel and made this little edge on here. So I'm getting ready to cut it out and line it up here and weld her in. So I already drilled the holes that are going to go on the core port, and I've used a pencil and I've kind of marked where it's got to go. So I'm about ready to get the cutoff wheel out and just zing this out cut this damaged part out here, then we'll just whoop, drop this in. These these fenders are real flexible, so it's not like, you know, a panel that's gonna be super critical. It'll it'll move, these things will move around. You know, if it's off by like an eighth inch or something, it'll move right into place as long as I cut it here pretty good. And we'll butt weld this guy in and uh, fix the front of this fender and paint it, and then this can go on. I decided, uh, like I said, a couple minutes ago, I decided I was going to cut up my aftermarket fender, cut the bottom off it, and fix that fender. I decided just to skin the outside of it. When I put the driver's side fender on, the lower attachment bolt uh, bracket piece was missing, and the fender doesn't move around at all. So I'm just going to cut the other passenger side fender. I'm just going to cut the bottom off, make a new outer skin, um, and just weld it back on, and we'll paint that. And then I don't have to waste that whole uh, aftermarket fender just trying to get the inner brace piece. It's not really even necessary. Check it out. It's far from perfect, but 
it's a thousand times better than what it was, and it's way more good enough for an Ender Fender panel than always ever going to see. It's kind of butt welded-ish, and then it was super hard trying to weld. The gap was a little big, and then some of this is punky, but I got it all. It's not pretty, but I'm not even going to fill it or anything. I'm just going to blow some black paint on it. But uh, there we go. Repaired the inner fender panel so it can go on back on the truck. Same thing. This one's wonky, but nobody's ever going to see it up against the fender. All right, it's the next day, the next morning. The paint is drying on the inner fender panel here. Bam! Revealed! Perfect. It came out nice. Nice flat black there. Look at that. Can't even tell it's been fixed. As long as you don't look at the welds, it's fine. Perfect. Let's go ahead and... Ah! Let's go ahead and get this guy installed on the truck, and then we'll tackle the uh, outer fender. Also, last night I went and I found the wiring harness that goes under the hood. I just got that all laid out. Maybe we'll go ahead and throw that in the truck after we get the fender on. But I, luckily I labeled everything most of the way, and I can put it all back together. I also found I had a good used ignition box there, the orange box, to go to the distributor. I got those in the junkyard off a truck. That was fortunate. I can't believe this truck ran when I pulled it into the garage. Here's the uh, Chrysler Blue Box. Look at the back of it. It like unpotted itself and was slowly running down the fender well. It still worked, but that's crazy. There's like wax and sand and everything else in that potting material. It's gross, but. This did run, but we're going to pitch it right in the... Goes there now. Oh. Let's hit it on everything on the way in. It's like the other side I'm using all new. Stainless steel hardware to hold this in, might as well. That way it won't ever rust again. Ow, that's my head. I put anti-seize on the bolts, so when you do that, as soon as you touch it, you're immediately covered in anti-seize. Great. Boom. How many ugga duggas? Oh yeah, look at that, mounted. Ugh. Just gotta do the back bolt. Actually, I'm going to leave the back bolt loose because it's got a big hole and it can float around and then you can seat it to help it, the fender seat on it. But that's the inner fender. All right, we're going to use a little piece of cardboard here make a template. Here's the damage on the lower part of the fender. What I'm going to do is uh, where this rotted, there was a brace on the inside, but it's rotted up past here. So is what it is, the other side's rotted off, but the, uh, like I said, the, the bolts in the center of the fender tends to hold the fender pretty well. And I can always drill through here and make a little strap over to the truck. So we're not gonna worry about the inner structure. We're just gonna make a patch to fix the outside. So this corner is single layer here, and this is a nice shape, and this is where the inner fender attaches. So we're gonna leave that. So I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm just gonna try to make a uh, template instead, just trying to cut it out of the metal first try. Might be a little bit easier to make a template. Um, so, if I want to do that, do that, do that, just kind of in a bender here by hand, get like a reference mark for now. Use my dirty fingers and make a reference mark there. that can be folded over like factory. By the way, I'm using a Harbor Freight glove box. It's got decent cardboard. There we go. 
And we got that little flange there. Now I just eyeballed this, uh, cutting it out. We're uh, drawing it on there. Just eyeballed it. Eyeballed it. So that uh, pretty much lines up with that. And what I'll do is I'll I'll cut the piece out with the cardboard, and then we'll we'll cut the fender last so we can fit the the size of the hole we cut to the panel that we make. Now I'm just going to go on the back side and trace around where it comes down around the fender. It's actually got a little bit of a angle to it that we got to replicate here, but I'm going to cut it a quarter inch wide because I'm going to, this is the double edge or rolled edge of this panel here. So I'm just going to cut it wide and then when we make our panel, we'll have enough to do a hem seam. I can hammer it over on itself and make, make a seam. So I cut it a quarter inch wide there. Roughly it. I'll cut it out and then uh, we'll bend her up. I'll bend the, I'll put this flange on first and we'll get in here and just kind of rolled over, probably clamp it into place and then scribe along it real, get a real precise scribe along the edge and then be able to cut this precisely to where it's got to be. Just lay it in there, butt welder up, do a little bit of grinding. This is all going to be flat black from here down. Ouch, that's sharp. This is, there's a, this is going to be a flat black from here down this lower section. So we can just hide it in that. It'll be fine. Okay, I got the patch cut out here. I just took and I hammered around an eighth inch hem on the end, like I said, and uh, I broke up the little piece. So now I should be able to just try to like work this, bend it over the fender. Let's try to get a shape. Just let me check how it's going to look. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's going to work, work out good. Just get some pop rivets, I'll just rivet it right on there. Now it's hard to bend. It's hard to bend it over itself. But I bend it a little bit, take it off, I'll bend her by hand. And once again, this is not probably the best way, obviously. But we're just trying to make this truck a little bit better than it was. And a quick little patch panel by hand is better than rust holes in the fender. And it should make a good, nice, tight, nice, tight panel. Boom. That'll be awesome.
Okay, I skipped ahead a little bit. I painted the patch on the fender. I didn't do any body work, just painted it. And I don't even know what it looks like, but we're gonna see the reveal in a second. Here comes the fender. I've covered it with fluid film on the inside. So we're ready to install. Here I come, try not to scratch everything. Try not to hit the truck. Aha, here I am. Boom. I got my hardware out. We'll take a look at the patch later. Later, after this is on, but here we go. Probably can't see what I'm doing because I'm right in the way, but we're gonna hang that, we're gonna hang that. Installed. Oh, it's a little more complicated than that. What do we got working here? The tab on the cab. Cab tab needs to be bent some. Ah. But how is my height? First, I want to check my height, my shim. I got to shim it a couple shims up in the air. Come here. There we go. We got a, a good gap here. It's lined up, but like I said, this huge bottom gap, the fender is too, the core support's too high on this side. So, got to drop that down. Let me put the rest of the, what is that? Dirt bike. Let me put the rest of the bolts. I'm going to put the rest of the bolts into the uh, inner fender and all that loosely, get it all tied in and everything together. And then I'm going to shim it with the core support at the end. And then I'll bolt down this bolt here and lock her in. And we'll have the whole front, both front fenders installed. I got your local home brew right here. Oh, Jordan stopped by. What's up? Hi. Let's put this hood on. Okay. Hold on. Each one of us has got a boot. Got a boot, boot. We got to boot these bolts out of here. So we're all dug in now, right now? Nope. Take them out. And I have a little bit of anti-seize we're going to put on it. That means we'll be on us everywhere. You don't have any anti-seize left? I had to get rid of it. I uh, used up the sent sentimental bottle. On Did my, you really? I'm doing a new bottle. I'm sorry. Had sorry it for about 20 that. years. Where is it? Is it back here? No, it's got to be in the truck somewhere. Here it is. <sighs> hey, this is a, one of them brushless ones. It's a, it's a new one I got when I bought the the other 20-volt the Sawzall. You know how I know it's new? I still has the clip on it. I use the clip, bro. I hang them on my pants. Can I put my goo on your bolt? That's good. Only if you hang it on your pants. Yikes. It's recording. Thank you. Uh, That's good. Oh. This isn't nearly enough. It's perfect. Now look at the only thing we got to do is not break the brand new windshield. That's asking a lot about it. If it wasn't a brand new windshield, if you place the gun here on the inner fender wall, which Dodge, Dodge has provided us because they're awesome, you can then you can. Can you reach it? Do you need a step box? I got a step box. You know what? I'm not as tall as you, but do you, do you I want can a, reach that. Do you that. want a step box? I can reach that. Well, we're going to be tall. Right, well, I got a step box if you want. Where'd you put your screws? There's a step box for you. Where? There's your shine box. It's not going to work. Where'd you put your screw? Uh, they're bolts, number one, and they're over here on a battery tray. Oh, I don't have a battery tray. You're going to have to, like, gum them or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes is right. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can lose that. The only thing we got to do is not break the brand new windshield. So as long as I just break the brand new windshield, I'm fine, right? Yep. As long as you don't break the brand new windshield. Can I scratch your brand new paint job? Don't scratch anything. <laughs> Why? Man, the edge of this hood is sharp. Okay, we're going to have to pick it up. Yeah, pick it up. Because you got those girly hands. You got girly hands and then like this and like this and it should kind of like shelf down. There goes a nut. It's gonna have to like shelf. Um, can you hold it or you want to get one of yours in or do I get one in or what? I'm trying to get mine in. Do I get a push towards you? Nope. Nope. I just need to struggle a little bit more. The secret to the Ugga Dug is the cross okay. threaded immediately. So if you lined up the bolt holes with the original paint thing or it should. Uh, yeah. It should go right in the place. Oh, is that right? This is a factory restored vehicle. Mostly. Mostly. All right. All, all the stuff we're putting together here was originally there. So yeah. as long as it's cross-threaded right now, it's good? Yeah, run, run them in. Don't, 
Don't make them tight. Just hold just a little bit. That doesn't sound good. Oh, the rifleman's on. I'm distracted. Oh, How about you do your side? How about we put the hood on? I got distracted by the rifleman. Lucas Kane is awesome. Cause. Oh man. Don't hit. Hold on a minute. You're, you're razzle dazzling me. Let me oh. get my bolt in. Why is the paint? The secret to the Ugga Dug is that you have to strip it immediately. Yeah, that's what I did. That's why I. Uh... Uh oh. Strip it immediately. How many Ugga Duggas does it take? Oop, oop, oop. Why are the hinges so far away? How'd you do your side? You got both bolts in? I mean. I mean, is there some ish. bolts in so it's not going to come out? Yeah. Because I'd be really sad if I broke my brand new windshield. I mean, I'm not going to say it's perfect, but if you squint. All right, hold up. I'm going to, I'm going to secure it. Oh, I can see the witness marks of the original paint. That looks yeah, like I a... see them on my side too, but I don't like. I like it. I don't like how difficult this what? screw wants to be. Don't take them both out at the same time. Oh no, what do I do? I'm serious, you might wanna. There's, there's one in there. Got, I'll hold it up so you can see it. Oh, okay. Push it up oh. to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, I just didn't want to thread very well. See what I mean? It seems tight. So she said, it's going right in there. Oh. Is it on the witness mark? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Dude, if we're this is anything like the one that we did for my truck. No, this will go down first click. <laughs> it'll, go, it'll, it'll go down first time. Oh, crap. Yeah, it'll go down first time. Click, click. Whatever you do, don't slam it. Is it going to work? We'll go down first time because this is our Why tenth these... cut. Oop, 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 oop. What's it doing? What's it doing? Oh my goodness. It's crooked ish. It's got to go. We got a heavy quarter on this side. Yeah, it's got to go. Ooh. You're, you're, uh, Ooh, and you got a heavy half on this side. Your side needs to come down some. Your side needs to come down an eighth. Well, yeah, the uh, I'm sucked in from the fender a little bit. I think, I think if you uh, pull this side down an eighth, it'll straighten that out a little bit too. I don't know if you squared up your fenders yet. But I up put I put the fenders back on the original paint marks. Well. Maybe the hood was this off. Is, a this bit. is tight. Yeah, yeah, the hood's crooked. Here Come we go. Come on, man. Ooh. Come ah. on, man. Where's my Ugga Dugga? It's right there. All right, let me put my hand on it here. That's what she said. Don't drop it through the windshield. Okay, bring it down like a touch. I think you want it right there. Ugga Dugga in the place. Now ah, what? Eh. Put the lift kit on this truck. I like that we're going to have to disassemble it to get it out. Ooh, I like that. It's not quite good yet. It's, this is pretty close here on this side. Let me get the cowl on this side. The, fen the fender, that fender's tight a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, you could pull it down just a hair more, I guess. But this, this gap is pretty close. On the cowl. Word. Pretty close. Let me see if Maybe. it'll. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's kind of tight here, isn't it? Oh. oh, it wants to move quite a bit there. Why yeah, did the it hood, do that? Yeah, the hood latch can, might not be. <laughs> I, mean, I could bump that fender out just a hair and bump this one in, but I think. I think you probably could drop it just, just a whisker more. Drop but, it. Like... But really, only a whisker. <laughs> drop it like it's hot. Where's my Aga Daga? I don't know how much room you've got see, in those slots. See, I don't like how... I don't know if you have any more room in the slots. I don't like how it's so far off. Here's your eyeballs of knowledge. Well, you... Yeah. Yeah, you're... You're a heavy quarter on this one, and you're about... I just happen to have the grill right here. What does the grill do? <laughs> just kind of goes like that. <laughs> 
No, that doesn't take up any of it. I the know. whole thing needs to come out. But maybe that's how it goes. I mean, we can can move it. Ahead. I mean, it's so actually. Hold on a second. You remember when we were fooling around with mine? It it actually came down when you latched it all the way too. You want to latch it all the way? I mean, this gap's alright. We could widen the rear gap up. Well, I can't latch it all the way because the latch crip, but they're, you know, it's going to be behind I, the grill a bit. I think, I think you probably, because it's, that's, as it drops, it's going to come forward just a little bit, too. You know what I mean? That last little bit, it's coming forward a little. I mean, ish. Not much. Why is this? But because of the way this, this last chamfer line comes down. Actually, the grill goes way out here. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be more funny. What'd you say? Good uh, thing this isn't my truck. hey -o. The grill actually comes way out here, and there is gap. I want to bring the hood. I want to bring the hood ahead a little bit. Yep, I think it's a good idea. Okay, Jordan, it's many, many, many hours later. Let's try it out. Ready? What's going to happen? Boom! Oh man, we're rubbing on this one. It's fine. It's perfect. Check it out. Let's get this here. Whoop! 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 Check it out. Check it out. There's a bee's nest on the back of that tin grill. What? What? There is. Don't need that. There's also a bunch of nuts in the hood. Well, that's a good representation. Ta-da! Look at that! Bam! I love it. 80 tin grill Dodge, completely reassembled from the cab forward. I love the frame-off restoration. This is a perfect frame-off restoration. I buff this out, you're not even going to see it. Nobody's going to know. It's got one little ding there, it's got a little ding there. It's got missing paint here. It's got a whole bunch of dings here. Nobody's ever going to see it. It's missing paint here. Rub this out and shine it up. Put some shine juice on it. This thing will look like it's brand new right from Dodge. I mean... All the panels fit just like Dodge. Like wide, narrow, hanging out, sticking in. It's it's perfect. I guess just, you don't have to worry about people wanting to steal it. Nope. You kidding me? This is the only one of these trucks in town. Nobody's got these trucks anymore. I will be the hero... They'll know me when I'm coming to town. They'll know me by my brown tin grill Dodge. Got to have dreams. Got to have dreams. How many lights come on when you pull out the switch? All of them. Because <laughs> they're going to be all new-ish. Now, the plow frame can go on. The grill can go in. The glower piece valence can go on. The radiator can go in. And pretty much whoop, the whole front of the truck together. Whoop. When does it fire? Very soon-ish. I don't hear a fire. It's not ready to fire right now, but it is close because I just got to put the wiring harness in it, plumb the rest of the stuff. I got a new brand new radiator, put it all together, and we'll be good to go. It's got brakes that work. It needs a fuel tank. I love it. All right. That's it. This is a really long one because we did a whole bunch of stuff in this video. Thanks for coming over, Jordan. Are you on camera? I think so. I can't tell the camera guys over there. What's up? Oh. Oh. I thought the... I haven't done the outro yet. Oh. Hold on. I'm distracted. I'm watching the rifleman. Okay. Bam. So that's it. Thanks for helping, Jordan. I couldn't have done it without you. We didn't break the windshield. Here's evidence. Slick. No broken windshield. <gasps> Mint. So sometimes you got to call on the big guns and you need some help putting stuff together like this hood. I get, I get, oh, okay. <laughs> they, they just got weird. They just got real and just got weird. So thanks for watching. Next time we'll be doing something else on the Dodge, I'm sure. And you'll see it right here, bam, at the Quick Speed Show.